Hi, Leanne. Hi, how are you? Living the dream. <laughs> oh, boy.
Hi. Hi, Leanne. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Did you get my text about reading the resolution? Um, no. Oh. I did so, not. If you don't mind, can you read the resolution when it gets before us? Sure. Thank you. No pressure. Hey Dave. Chris, what's going on? Not much. Just trying to get organized. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be a better way, right? Hey, Mayor Hopkins. Good evening, Mr. President. Welcome oh, yeah. back to the city council. Thank you. Just where I always wanted to be. Hey, Dave. How you doing, Mayor Hopkins? Good, thank you. We only have about what three weeks till spring training. Well, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to tell you what I heard, but <laughs> what'd you hear? They're thinking um, uh, May first, start of the season, 120 games has been kind of been floating around because they they according to MLB they want all the players to be vaccinated. I don't know how how it's going to go, but. At this point, I would take anything. Absolutely. I know the college canceled this season already. I don't know. It's uh, it's uh, they're trying to figure it out. So down it down in Florida, they have the the forty man roster, 
and it's split between the in Tampa. It's split between the two fields, twenty and twenty, and they go back and forth, and they only have a certain hour of the day they go. Well, hundred and twenty games that might give the Yankees a shot this year. And here we go. <laughs> here we go. So right, gonna, what's that, Dave? You want to do a council versus the administration softball game? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Dave, who would you play for? Yeah. I would manage. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take Rosalba on our team. Here you go. Which team is that? Not the Yankees. The administrations. Uh, oh, here we go. Which one? What? I wasn't listening. I thought you were talking about the Yankees. Well, we're trying, we're going to organize a council versus administration softball there you game. Go. Rosa, Rosalba, you, Rose, are you a Yankee uh, fan too? No. Good girl. Tell you what, Chris. You wouldn't want to be in my house during the summer between the Yankees and the Red Sox. Madam Clerk, can you? I'm sorry. What did you say? You cut out. You talking to me? Yes. No, I said you wouldn't want to be in my house between the Yankees and the Red Sox. We're all split. I'll tell her. Just keep going. <laughs> we haven't heard from Leanne yet on that. I'm a Red Sox fan. Red Sox? That a girl. Yeah. So one, two, three, it's three to two right now. Listen, I've been I've been behind the eight ball for a long time. I'd be happy with watching Little League. Well, I watch my grandson in the front yard. <laughs> Madam Clerk, can you let Senator Lombardi into the panel? I see him in there, but I know I know he wants to speak tonight. I'll make you um, co-host. Oh, that's a lot of responsibility, Leanne. Senator Lombardi, welcome. Mr. President, how are you? Good, sir. How are you? I'm Hello, well, Senator. Senator. Hello, Senator. Mayor Hopkins, more Yankee stuff on the wall. Hi, Mayor. How are you? Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, sir. Those are all Yankee stuff on your wall, too. Huh? Absolutely. No. Well, that, that makes it three to three, Chris. Yeah, Judy's around here somewhere. She's a Yankees fan. Frank, is Jack there with you? Senator? I'm sorry? Is Jack Pullius with you? No, no, no. He leaves about 2.30. Nice. Senator, thanks for coming on tonight. My pleasure, Councilman. Anything for you, you know that. Uh, right back at you. I appreciate it very much. Councilman Brady, how are you, sir? I'm well, Council President. How are you, sir? Very well. Long time no talk. Your hair looks good. Thanks. <laughs> Ed, you can break the tie. Yankees or Red Sox? Um, whatever you think. That's that's <laughs> wrong. That's just wrong. Okay, what do you want, Ed? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I, sh I should have wore a Red Sox hat to this meeting. Hey, yo. Uh... Okay. I'm waiting for a few more council members before we get underway. And to anybody who's in the waiting room waiting, I know you can hear us. We can't see you. When we get to public comment, just raise your hand and we'll we'll let you into the panel to speak. So just hang tight. Mr. Ferry, how are you? Hello, everyone. Good to see you, sir. Hello, Councilman. How's everybody doing? 
Doing well. Councilman Ferry, how are you, sir? Very good, Mayor. How about you? Oh, three weeks and the building's still standing. <laughs> hey, guys. Hello. Hey, Councilwoman. And Councilwoman. Hi, how are you? Oh, Councilwoman. You definitely have the best background, Councilwoman Marina. Do I? Thank you. Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> Just a window. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do when the Christmas tree is finally gone. Right. Valentine's Day tree. That's right. <laughs> Ed, do you like that's ours? not a real one, Chris, is it? No. I was going to say, that's like the beauty ours? of the we real one. It's got to go. <laughs> What's that, man? These are the true colors of City Hall. I see that. Yeah, the wall. You got a little thing up there. Down. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> We're under Making... renovation. Yeah. Get the scraper out, Mayor, and get those walls fixed. Well, that's what I've been doing all day. I just threw this jacket out. I'll be painting next week. I was saying, you, need a, you need a painter's cap. <laughs> yes, I do. Yep. Yeah. Councilman, Councilwoman Jermaine, welcome. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello, welcome. Hi. Hello, Councilwoman. Nick. We'll just give another minute in case anybody logs on late, then we'll get going. We'll give another minute. Do we have a solicitor on the line? Chris, I'm here. Okay. Leanne and Rose, are you ready? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay, welcome everybody. I'd like to call this special city council meeting to order, to order in accordance with section 3.07 of the Home Rule Charter and section 2.04.060 of the city code. I hereby call the special meeting of the city council to be held on Thursday, January, 21st, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. Clerk, will you please take the roll? Councilwoman Marino? Present. Councilman Ferry? Present. Councilwoman Renzulli? Present. Councilwoman Vargas? Present. Councilwoman Jermaine? Present. Councilman Donegan? Councilman Riley? Present. Councilman Brady? Present. Council President Pavlosis. Present. We have one agenda item this evening. It's for introduction and hearing of a resolution requesting the governor of Rhode Island and the Rhode Island General Assembly adjust public health guidelines and executive orders, orders that are harming Rhode Island's small business community, sponsored by uh, my Council President Peploskis, Council Vice President Brady, and Councilwoman Vargas. I'll entertain a motion at this time. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve and a second. At this time, uh, Madam Clerk, can you please read the resolution into the record? Whereas due to the COVID-19 public health crisis, the governor of the state of Rhode Island has enacted a number of executive orders and health directives. While well intended for the general public, those order and directives have negatively impacted Rhode Island's small business community. And whereas Rhode Island's small business community is comprised of a wide array of diverse business owners, employees, and vendors who together make up the heart and soul of our state's economy by providing employment and financial security for hundreds of thousands of Rhode Islanders. And whereas while well-intentioned, some directives and executive orders in particular the arbitrary 10 p.m. weekday and 10.30 p.m. weekend closing time established on November 8, 2020 have caused significant, significant and in some cases irreparable harm to restaurants, bars, social clubs, stores, vendors, 
indoor recreation facilities and other small businesses. And whereas such harm has not been adequately recognized or addressed by the state of Rhode Island, insofar as the state has failed to provide sufficient resources or assistance to the small business community, and the state has not signaled when or how small businesses may return to normal hours of operations, despite those businesses taking numerous precautions and complying with all executive orders and health directives. And whereas the closing times established by the within reference executive orders and directive are not grounded in any empirical, scientific, or other type of analysis, and such orders and directives initially stated as to be temporary in nature have been in effect continuously for several months. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Honorable City, Cranston City Council strongly urges both the Governor of Rhode Island and the Rhode Island General Assembly to act without delay to allow small businesses to resume their normal operating hours. And if the state of Rhode Island is unable or unwilling to remove such restriction on normal operating hours, that immediate and decisive action be taken by state leaders to provide significant additional financial assistance to the small businesses that are struggling and negatively affected by this mandate for the sake of their employees, for the health and welfare of the families that these businesses support, and for the future survival of businesses that because of overly strict mandates and the many challenges and expenses presented by COVID-19 are hanging on by a thread. And <clears throat> a copy of this resolution be forward, forwarded by the Cranston City Clerk to Her Excellency Governor Gina M. Raimondo, to His Excellency Lieutenant Governor Daniel McPhee, to all of the honorable representatives and senators representing the city of Cranston in the General Assembly, to the Honorable Rhode Island Speaker of the House and the Honorable Rhode Island Senate President, and to all Rhode Island City and Town Councils who are respectfully urged to join the Cranston City Council in passing a resolution in support of the small business community. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Um, just before we open up public comment, um, I'd like to recognize we have the Honorable Mayor Hopkins and the Honorable Senator Lombardi here in attendance tonight. I know they've taken time out of their busy schedule to uh, testify on this resolution. So I'm going to open up the floor first with uh, Mayor Hopkins and then go to Senator Frank Lombardi and then I will open it up for a comment from anybody that's on the uh, call this evening. So uh, Mayor Hopkins, welcome back to the Cranston City Council and the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, President. And thank you to uh, all of the members of the council. Uh, it's nice to be back here with all of you and uh, to give you my interpretation of what I see in this resolution. I also wanna thank uh, my colleague, Senator uh, Lombardi, a good friend of mine uh, as well for his thoughts this evening. Uh, what, what I like to do is start by saying as much as I really support this resolution I want to keep in mind that the health and safety and welfare of our uh, the citizens are of utmost importance, and we, we can't lose sight of that. But at the same time, we have many business owners uh, in our city that have been uh, unduly told to close or shut down early uh, with without very little information to tell us that by closing early, that this is going to stop the spread of anything. Uh, I think we're all adults uh, and we should be able to make those types of decisions on our own without government interference. Uh, so I'd like to, com to commend uh, Councilman Brady, uh, Councilman Poplaskis and Councilwoman Vargas for this resolution uh, and especially for their efforts to work with uh, uh, Governor I guess it's Governor-elect uh, McKee, uh, who I know is also supporting our position on this. But I think for the vital role of our businesses here in Cranston, that this resolution should be loud and clear 
to our state leaders that uh, we need to allow our businesses to stay open and we let, need to allow our citizens to make those decisions, uh, rightfully so as adults, that uh, we are going to help uh, our businesses get through this pandemic. Uh, but if we don't do something pretty soon, we're going to lose uh, the base of our community and our neighborhoods, which is our small business population. So what I'm going to do is refer you to a video that I put together. If you do go to my website, uh, you can see that video in support of this. I shot it yesterday morning in front of Harriet's restaurant and I am in complete support of this resolution. And I tip my cap to uh, the council and I urge uh, support of this uh, on every level. So thank you for the invitation, the opportunity to talk to you. Thank you very much, Mayor Hopkins. Your comments and leadership is much appreciated. Um, thank you, sir. Moving on to uh, Honorable Senator Frank Lombardi. Senator thank you, Mr. Lombardi, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the council. Um, ironically, uh, I'm on a holding pattern right now at the State House, where I introduced an essential caregiver bill, which is going to allow people who are designated essential caregivers to have access to nursing homes during this pandemic as well. And uh, so where uh, the long and short of it is where we as a body have to partner ourselves up to do what's best for the community during this terrible pandemic and what's happened. Uh, and I certainly uh, thank uh, the council president and councilman uh, Brady and councilwoman Lamas for bringing this forth and particularly pointing out the, the latter two gentlemen who contacted me, who uh, we can brag that have a wonderful uh, speaking and open relationship about communications. And so they brought this issue forth uh, for me and I immediately called the state and uh, we are going to put in a resolution uh, that will mirror uh, the re your resolution and, and go a little bit steps forward. I mean, I think we are all, uh, weary of the fact of what this impact has had on all of us from a, from a health standpoint, from a loved one standpoint, uh, but for businesses as well, small businesses, and particularly our community in Cranston, all of Cranston, uh, we thrive on these small businesses, uh, these lo uh, small uh, locally owned businesses, and particularly the restaurant industry. It's particularly telling to me, uh, I don't know if you know this, but during the pandemic, at the heart of the pandemic, when we were put in recess, I donated uh, my Senate pay to the hospitality industry to try and help this group a little bit, just to show symbolically uh, there. And so all of these executive orders become problematic. And I, and I quote uh, someone uh, that I know very, very well, uh, Joe DiQuattro, who owns the family of businesses known as Pane Vino and El Massimo. And Joe uh, applauded the fact when we reopened uh, the businesses from 25% to 50%, uh, and then immediately described to me what the pause in November did to his business. It just basically crash landed. Uh, and those businesses were not able to uh, uh, reconcile themselves for that period of time through the critical holiday season and, and the sorts. And so uh, everyone uh, has raised issue uh, with the hourly closings of 10 and 1030 that this uh, as it's called, pause, has created to these businesses. Uh, the long and short of it is I see no data in terms of that supports uh, what, if any effect, that uh, short time frame has on uh, local businesses. And, and But when I said at the beginning, they want to go a little bit further. We'd like to look and implore basically to ask the governor's office to just pull back on the resolutions, uh, on the regulations as a whole. So there are other issues that particularly draw to me. So uh, for instance, I can walk into one of my local establishments and sit at a table that is at or near a bar area and get served everything that I want. But if you sit at that, you can't sit at the bar area and receive anything there, irrespective of the fact that the thousands of dollars that these places have spent on plexiglass and segregated boots, if you will, at the bar. So I, I think all in all, it's, it's, it's all encompassing and not just uh, this hourly thing. Uh, I'm behind it 1000%. Uh, Senator Casada from Providence and I have agreed to co-sponsor this, this resolution. 
uh, I'll certainly share it with the council and my uh, my constituents when uh, when it gets drafted. But it should be drafted uh, probably tomorrow or over the weekend, and we'll get it uh, put on the floor as soon as uh, humanly possible. Uh, I thank you for allowing me the time to speak. If there are any questions, uh, I certainly. But again, I want to thank the three co-sponsors of this bill. It's it's an important. Uh, public service that you're doing, but more importantly, it's an economic de development decision that you're doing, not only for Cranston, but for the entire state of Rhode Island. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Lombardi, for your support and your, and your work on this as well. Um, I'll just briefly say that for all the years I've been a council person, you know, anytime I've had an issue, a state issue, I picked up the phone and called you in your office. And you've been extremely responsive. So on behalf of the citizens of Cranston, I just want to thank you for all of your help on it. And Mr. President, the feelings mutual about you and Councilman Brady, uh, who I've worked with uh, in, in my district uh, the last several years. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Okay, at this point, uh, we have a motion and a second on the floor. I'm gonna open this up for uh, public comment. Um, we can go one at a time and we will let you in the room and um, give you a couple of minutes to to speak on this, uh, this item. Madam Clerk, can you? If you'd like to speak, just put your hand up in the uh, waiting room if possible, and we will um, bring you in one at a time. Ms. DeAngelis, you can unmute and speak at this time. Susan DeAngelis. She, uh, if we could go back to her, she lost connection. She just uh, let okay. me know. We'll bring in uh, Rick Simone next to speak. Mr. Simone, the floor is yours. Council President, thank you. Members of the, the City Council, um, Honorable Frank Lombardi, Mayor Hopkins, thank you all for considering this resolution and thinking about it tonight. Uh, I represent the Ocean State Coalition and also the Federal Commerce Association. The Ocean State Coalition has over 200 restaurants that are members of it throughout the state of Rhode Island. Some amazing restaurants in your town, including Chapel Grill, the Thirsty Beaver, obviously, Avio, Twin Oaks. All of these restaurants have been severely impacted, severely impacted by these regulations. We take the health risks very seriously. None of the places that I am associated with have any issues with mask wearing, with the social distancing, with the cleanliness factors that we have to keep up with. It's the over restrictive regulations such as the one that you're considering tonight with the curfews and also with the bars. They have been tremendously devastating to these industries. In conversations I've had over the last couple of weeks since the pause was supposed to end, what's not realized is that a 10 p.m. curfew or a 10.30 curfew means that most places need to stop seating by eight or 8.15 in order to allow you to come in, sit down, finish your meal, rotate with the capacity limits that they have. So a 10 and 10.30 curfew are really not what they seem to be from the time perspective. It's been proved to be very challenging. We made it through the pause because of the government's money that came out to assist us through those three weeks. And now those funds have been exhausted. So we this resolution and we hope that tonight it will pass the Cranston City Council and then with um, Mr. Lombardi's help and also others that we can get this to be seriously overturned from the state level. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Simone. Appreciate that. Okay. Uh, I know. I was there. Uh, uh, Angeles. Hi, I'm here. Can you hear me? We can we can hear you. Uh, name and address for the record, please, and you can testify. Excuse me? Wait a minute. Testify. The floor is yours. Name and address for the record, please. Um, Susan DeAngelis Faust. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, I we keep can, using we can hear you, Susan. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm in the restaurant walking around here. Um, I I just thank you for um having me on this meeting. Um, everybody's kind of saying everything that I wanted to say already. Um, you know, we put up all this plexiglass and spend like five, $6,000. Can't use it. 
Um, luckily, we have a you know a large enough dining room here where we can seat people. But I, it's safer to sit at that bar than to go up to a table and serve a customer um, than it is to go to the bar. So I don't see the difference here. And the you know the closing early. What does COVID come out at um, ten o'clock at night? And we're having a lot of trouble having the customers. You know, we have a lot of customers coming in here late, and you know, we're in a situation where um, trying to get them to get in and get out. You know, you know, serve them by ten o'clock, and you're going to be out of here by ten thirty. It's causing a problem. So, um, you know, I don't know. It's just I'm just just had it. And, um, you know, whatever, whatever we can do to pull together and um, to solve this situation, um, I'm here. You know, we all need to stick together and um, as restaurant tours and, you know, do what we can. And thank you, Ed, for all your help. Of course, Susan, thank you for coming on the call. Obviously, Twin Oaks is a staple oh. to our community. So we, choose, we truly, truly appreciate your input and, and your uh, feedback tonight. So, I mean, I probably could say a lot more, but I don't thank know. You. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. OK, public comment is still open. Is there anybody else on the call that would like to speak? Madam Clerk? Heather Santoro. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, having me speak. Um, my name is Heather Santoro. I'm here representing PJ's Pub on um, Pontiac Ave. Um, Paul and Johnny could not make it tonight. Um, I've been an employee over at PJ's for six years now. Um, I'm one of the managers at the establishment. Um, and I just came to echo you know, what other people have been saying about uh, the restaurant industry and the restrictions that have been put on us. Um, the time restriction has not only affected, you know, what we're able to do each day of the week, um, serving people till 1 a.m. A majority of our clientele come in 10 o'clock, um, nurses, firefighters, police officers, people who don't work your typical nine to five jobs that look for a place to go eat, have a drink, unwind after their shift. Um, outside of that, it's had a major effect on our hiring process. And it's become an extreme challenge when it comes to um, finding people to work in the kitchen, on the floor. Nobody wants to sign up to work a four hour shift and that be the only shift that they have during the week. You, you just can't survive that way. Um, so not only has it affected, you know, what we think that we, we do best in, in catering to, um, you know, clientele and, and the hospitality piece, but it, it, it has been a burden on our, uh, our hiring. Um, so I support, you know, this resolution in hopes um, that something can come of it. And uh, I appreciate being able to speak tonight and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Heather. Appreciate it. Okay, anybody else from the public like to speak on this matter? Um, Marshall D'Ambrosio. Mr. D'Ambrosio, welcome. You can unmute and the floor is yours. Marshall, if you can hear us, you can unmute. How's this? We can hear you, sir. The floor okay, is yours. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I just want to thank the city council for taking up the cause over here for the small businesses in the city. Mayor Hopkins, thank you for getting on board. And Senator Lombardi, thank you for bringing this up to the state level. I, too, have been in business for 43 years, and this has impacted me greatly. But I'm going to talk about the other impacts of this closure at 10 o'clock that's affecting my business and I'm sure other businesses that's basically going unnoticed. I've lost three of my best employees moving out of state. There's a there's a uh, there's a definite definite matriculation of population getting out of Rhode Island, moving to a state where they can earn income, basic uh, basic economy. So I have to replace three employees that I had for many many years. Once this uh, COVID crisis is over, secondly, 
I don't know what the impact is on the city finances or the state finances, but when you're limiting one of your biggest grossing tax revenue agents in the state, that's got to affect the bottom line of the state budget and the city budget. That's another reason why we should be getting open and uh, operating successfully. Thirdly, we have a vested interest in the hospitality industry to provide a very clean establishment. If our patrons don't feel safe, they're not going to come in. And I go above and beyond making sure my base, my place is socially spaced, clean. When my customers come in there, they're having a good time and they know we care. My employees care and they feel safe in my establishment. And that goes for all the other restaurants and, and the uh, establishments that are here tonight at this meeting. We have a vested interest to do the right thing. And that goes overlooked. And the last thing, you know, when I go around during Christmas time, looking at all the big box stores, the malls and so on and so forth. And I sit back and say how we're basically limited with our operating hours and now our capacity. I just kind of shake my head. Uh, I don't see any logic to this. And uh, I just hope the city council's resolution is taken uh, seriously by the state of Rhode Island with the help of uh, Mayor Hopkins and Senator Lombardi and this situation get revolved, resolved. Thank you. Thank you, Marshall. Okay, anybody else from the public that would like to speak on this matter? You can just put your hand up and we can let you into the panel. I do not see anybody, I don't see any hands up. So I will close public comment at this time and entertain comments or discussion from the council. Okay, who would like to go first? Council Member Brady, Council Vice sure. President. Council, council President, thank you for the, the floor. Uh, you know, obviously this is a very important issue to me as a small business owner myself who's lost a restaurant through COVID. Um, I still have four that remain, one in Cranston, one in Smithfield, one in Foxborough, and uh, one in East Greenwich on the Warwick line, Warwick and East Greenwich line. Um, I certainly understand the everyday struggles that business owners go through. Uh, as we do our 90 and 90 small business tour and we talk to different restaurants and, and, and different businesses throughout the community and we actually see people eye to eye, you know, safely taking all the necessary precautions to keep the public safe, you know, crippled staff, diminished, diminished, uh, you know, spirits, bars that are closed with plexiglass that were spent thousands of dollars on, as we discussed earlier on this call. Um, you know, at times our hope is, is uh, the hope of our soul, the hope to, to keep going, the hope as a small business owner to bring joy into a world that, that is very tough in a year that was polarizing through politics, Democrats and Republicans just not getting along. I'm re-inspired by something that's just a resolution like this tonight when I can work with a senator who's a Democrat. I can work with a mayor who's a Republican. I can work with um, Councilwoman Vargas, who's obviously a Democrat. We can go to another com community, a Democratic community, and it passes in Smithfield. We can go to a Democratic community in North Providence on Tuesday and also looking for it to pass. When, when collectively, as two parties can find compromise in, in arbitrary mandates and make a difference, it's not just a resolution. It's more than that. And I think that's leadership. And I think, you know, going against the curve and not voting party lines and taking a hard stance on something that you believe in is what the world is looking for right now. We're not looking for us to continue to keep fighting. We're looking to empower the world, the suffering, the people that are going into work every day, figuring out, trying to pay rent, trying to get by, trying to survive. And these are the conversations we're having every day as we're talking to these business owners, these restaurant owners who are literally hanging on by a thread. 20 businesses, as reported by the Rhode Island Hospitality Association, 20 restaurants have closed last year, their doors for good. And there's nothing we can do to overcome that. Another 100 stand in hibernation on pause, unsure of their future. As this, as this pause gets extended, a pause that we signed up for and, and we're okay with not opening for Thanksgiving Eve, one of our biggest nights of the year, not opening during a holiday season, one of the, 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 the time that gets us through these January, February, March months. State stepped up, you know, they, they, they gave us some, some funding to get us through those times. But unfortunately, throughout this process, as the pause extended, they stopped being responsive. 
Our governor who made the executive order, stop coming to the podium, stop answering questions, stop providing data. And as other states change course, like as of today, breaking news, Massachusetts and decided to reopen restaurants, reopen in less restrictive times, um, Chicago, New York, on and on throughout the country as people are changing course because we're finding that the science is saying home gatherings are, you know, obviously 70% or more of the, the continued spread of this virus. Let's get people back into controlled environments. Let's get people back into restaurants that have invested money, funds, spirit. Um, let's get people back into an environment where there is plexiglass, where we are distanced. Let's continue to wear masks. Let's continue to spread hope and positivity for survival of an economy with these small businesses that are obviously the backbone of our economy. You know, I, I wanna commend Mayor Hopkins for being the first mayor in the, in the state of Rhode Island to stand up and stand behind us as this resolution. I think it's an incredibly powerful move um, and a guy that, that, that I've stand behind my whole life, a coach, a teacher, someone that just listens. And he spoke on Lieutenant Governor Dan McKee earlier in his conversation and who was also a Democrat. And I, I have to say that I have found, I have grown very fond of Governor to be uh, McKee's leadership as a small business owner, as a mayor, as a former councilman, as a Lieutenant Governor, he's, he's been in each and every single community. He's listened to us. He's hosted town halls. He's been in restaurants. He's visited different restaurants. He's been through all of it with us, elbow and elbow, listening to our concerns and helping us fight through it. I think there's no better time for a change of leadership, but the unfortunate reality of the current situation is we do not know how long our current governor is staying as she takes a seat at the table at the national level, which we're all very hopeful will bring continued change and a voice for us Rhode Islanders here. But during that time, we cannot just stop listening to our fellow Rhode Islanders. We cannot stop listening to our small business owners. We cannot stop listening to our community, the people that elect us, the people that empower us to put us in this position to make plausible, positive change. Senator Lombardi, I also commend you for being on this call tonight, for standing hand in hand with us and in taking on this issue, which is not an easy issue. You're putting the politics beside and you're, you're fighting hand in hand with us, which is incredibly appreciative. I also know that it's gonna be taking up on, on, on the house, on the rep side, which I know is also not an easy um, you know, fight to win. So as, as I cannot express how much I am hopeful for a better Rhode Island, hopeful for a better year, but I, I cannot stress enough how much we need this to happen now so we can save as many businesses as we can, save as many servers, save as many chefs, save as many managers, save as many musicians. There's so many people that can continue to be affected. So I truly appreciate everyone's support. Um, you know, I, I truly appreciate everyone's testimony and the restaurant owners that came on this call. As I was walking the the streets of Ward One and, and walking throughout the communities with different council people, uh, you know, Chris and, and Lamas, and just hearing the fragile souls, it's inspiring to uh, continue to fight this battle so we can actually create something that's not just a resolution, something that creates, you know, real change. So thank you also to my fellow counselors here that are on the call tonight, willing to hear testimony, willing to take on this tough fight and stand behind communities like Smithfield and soon to be North Providence. So I appreciate all your time. Thank you for letting me speak on this. and. Uh, Thank you, thank you, thank you again for the consideration. Thank you, Council Vice President Brady. Very powerful statement and words, much appreciated. I, uh, Council Member Vargas. Thank you, Council President, appreciate it. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I also would like to echo the words that uh, my fellow Council Member Brady has just said. Um, I'm also, you know, I'd like to take this time to also thank Mayor Hopkins and Senator Lombardi as well for their lead and, and um, allowing all of us to work together. Um, you know, what is happening with this pandemic is, is, is affecting all of us. You know, we all know someone um, that's been affected by it. Um, you know, some of us lost friends due to the health crisis and, um, you know, COVID-19 in general, um, it, it, it definitely should not be ignored. The positive numbers, the, co the COVID testings that are happening day to day, 
you know, this, this, this is really serious. And, and I understand the impact that COVID-19 has on each and every one of us. Some of us, it's, it's a little bit more personal to some of us. Um, some of us have had COVID-19 you know, or know someone and it's really taken a loved one away from us. But we also have to look out for a local commerce where COVID-19 has driven the business to an economic disruption. Um, our small businesses, they're the backbone to our community. They're the backbone just to our local economy. You know, there was a pause and a result of that. You know, there were grants and there were loans. Grants are not, is, is there as a temporary hold as it's, it's not sustainable for long enough. I clear, clearly don't see why businesses cannot continue to operate through normal hours. So as long as they continue to use the proper protocol the procedures in place, follow the guidelines that CDC and the governor and has, has requested and asked everyone to follow in order to make sure that the patrons and their staffs are safe with masks and just overall obeying all the current COVID-19 health mandates. You know, I've, I've said it throughout social media and, and I'll say it now, you know, while takeout is a great service, um, not every business can survive on takeout, regardless of the creative and innovative ways entrepreneurs have come up with. Business owners have had their expenses line increased. As we heard Senator Lombardi say, right? There's been restaurant owners who have invested in plexiglass right around their bar area. And then you can't use that location, that bar area any longer. That was an unnecessary expense that they can't even use at this point. So as we see their expense lines increase, the revenue decreases. And I would hate to see so many businesses close their doors or file bankruptcy. You know, the economic impact and the ripple effect it'll have on our city, perhaps not right now, perhaps not directly at the end of this fiscal year, but we'll definitely see an impact on our city revenues down the line if we see businesses closing day by day. I don't wanna see boarded businesses. I hate to see empty storefronts in our own community and throughout the state. Now, I wanna make sure that I'm also extremely clear that I'm supporting the hours of operations for restaurants. And by all means at all, I am not asking nor suggesting that we have nightclubs or lounges open. That is not the intention behind this. I'm not trying to say we should have restaurants make it a club scene at all. And that's not what restaurants are, are doing. But I wanted to make sure in case we have anyone on there that has said, well, what about a restaurants or what about a nightclubs or entertainment licenses? We're just asking the restaurants right now that instead of closing at 10 during the week or 10.30 in the weekend, that they stay open on their normal operational hours. How do you like that? I also... Now, I'm also asking each one of us on the council to work together and support a small business owners who are not only investing in our community, but hiring local constituencies that live here in our own community, they're vested. I also like to take the time to thank um, Councilman Brady uh, for taking the lead on this action. Um, not only because he's a council member, because he's an entrepreneur and I've you know, turned to him for questions and responses, just as I have when I've gone door, uh, knocking on, on businesses throughout my ward here in Cranston. I know he's very passionate about this and, and so am I and many of us. And I'd like to you know, thank uh, Council President Papalaskas as well. But I'd also like to go ahead and ask my fellow colleagues this evening to please consider passage of the resolution to help the Rhode Island small business owners, to help the Cranston businesses in unity and in a bipartisan effort to help all of our small business communities that are currently on life support or soon to be. I wanna thank all the business owners that are on the call today and know that we're all here working for you and trying to do as much as we can to make sure that you stay afloat, that your business prospers. Thank you. Thank I you. I have a question. Uh, pub public comment is uh, now closed. Miss, oh, okay. Uh, Councilmember Marino. Thank you. 
Um, I'd like to, to thank uh, Councilman Brady, uh, Council President Poplowskis and, and the mayor and, and Councilman Vargas for uh, the time and energy um, that you brought to, to bring this to the table. Um, I couldn't agree more that this doesn't, this isn't party politics. Um, this is survival. Um, and I have to say, you know, I've heard some people say um, that there is this concern of, well, it's going to be business as usual. No, uh, the two are not mutually exclusive and the two being health and the economics. And, and right now I equate this to uh, with our local small businesses, you know, what is the problem with them staying open during their you know, hours when they're abiding by the rules. We have a system in place, we have rules. They've invested in that, which is a costly investment. Let them stay open the hours so that they can see a return on that investment. I equate this to something simple. It's like their leg is broken and we took away their crutches. Give them their crutches back. Let them have a fighting chance. There are still going to be businesses that despite all these efforts are not gonna survive because it's tough and we can't ignore the virus as much as we all want to. You know, I think complacency has been contagious throughout this whole thing. It's an unfortunate reality that we have right now. Um, it, it's a bad situation, but we can't get complacent and say a rule that we put back in place in early November is still good now and not tell us why. When you can have malls that will open their regular hours during the holiday season, you can have big box retail that's open. It, it's just not fair. Um, now, if businesses and restaurants, look, if you walk in as a customer and they're not complying with the rule, then you don't go to that business, um, you know, or if you got to report it to the Department of Health, that's what you do. Um, but to say that they have to, you know, limit their hours to a certain time of the evening without any real scientific reason, this many uh, months, more than a couple of months in, into it, uh, I can't stand behind that. Um, and, and that, and that's uh, why I think that this is a challenging task, but it needs to, uh, it needs to change. And in, in terms of data, I believe today the rate was like three and a half percent. So we're doing better in terms of the positivity rate. We're not the numbers we were in November. I don't pretend to be a doctor. I don't pretend to be a health expert, but you know, we can't keep with the same rules that, that don't fit right now, or they're just not going to have a fighting chance and we're all going to suffer. Thanks. Thank you, Council Member Marino. Any other uh, discussion from Council Members? Council Member Renzulli. Hi, um, I just want to echo the sentiments of my um, fellow Council Members and thank you, Council Member Rady, um, President Poplowskis, um, Councilwoman Vargas, thank you, Mayor Hopkins for being here and Senator Lombardi for taking this resolution um, to the state level. Um, I do know that um, Councilman Brady has been working with the Rhode Island Small Business Coalition and they have publicly come forward and we thank them for their work on this resolution as well as um, the leadership of Lieutenant Governor McKee who has not um, made a public stance on this particular resolution but his work in the small business community um, encouraging us to work together and figure out how to mitigate this virus as well as um, be good for economic development and keeping our small business community active and vibrant. Um, I think his leadership definitely gives us hope down the line. Um, but as Council Member Brady mentioned, we don't have time um, for Governor Raimondo to hand over the reins to um, Lieutenant Governor McKee, um, we need to move forward now. What was meant to be a pause now seems to have become a stop. And well, I think that someone who has worked in the restaurant industry for half of my life, I understand how this works. And people who work in restaurants um, love the community. They are the people who are serving everyone after they've had a hard day of work. That's their job. They like to do it. Um, and this is how they support their families. And I think restaurant owners um, and the people that work there were happy to comply with um, all the different things that have come forward, the spacing, the plexiglass, masks, um, and the curfew when it was part of a pause. But now that it's months later, we are really digging into the pockets of the people who are going to work. There was someone on tonight who said that she can't get people to take 
four hour shifts. That's because a single mom who was a waitress can't pay her rent on a four hour shift. And a lot of money comes in between 10 and one. And we need to give people the opportunity to make that money if they're being just as safe at 1230 as they are at you know, 5.30 at night or at noon. So it makes no difference. I would call on um, the leadership of the state to show us why places can't be open past 10 o'clock. And I'm sure if there was actual data, scientific data to prove this, then people would be happy to follow along. But there's not, or they haven't shown that there is. So I would ask that they reconsider um, because we're really hurting the backbone of our our community and we're hurting people. I totally agree that we have to be careful and we're being careful in the middle of the afternoon. We need to be careful after 10 o'clock at night. Everyone needs to follow the rules and anyone who's not, then they can get fined or they can get shut down. But because of, you know, a few bad apples, it shouldn't ruin it for everyone else. And you're going to find that a lot of these businesses close. And like someone else said tonight, a lot of great employees are going to move out of state where they have the right to work and make a living and support their family. So I thank everyone who's worked really hard on this and I, I support the resolution completely. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Rinzuli. Any other council members? Council Member Ferry. Yes, I'll be very brief. As a previous business owner for over 40 years, I am in favor of this resolution tonight. Thank everyone for their work on it. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Jermaine. Thank you, Council President. Um, first of all, I have to acknowledge the power of communication. Um, I have to tell you because when I saw the resolution, I was I have some reserve. I have a five, seven years old nine years old on the light condition, has sickle cell disease. My kids love to go to the restaurant, but since the uh, pandemic, we all stay home. I have my mom on the light condition. So we, we all stay home and we do not have any data. We don't know what is going on right now in terms of increases or decreases of infectious rate. And I was like, is the government take intentionally want to destroy our businesses? Why dispose and nothing says about it as of now? And I said to myself, I do not have the answer how to support because we have to make the balance to support our small businesses at the same time to make sure we protect our people. It's a big balance. And I was thinking, and when I talked to council prisoner Brady, and I asked some question and I, and I was like, really talk about the language of the resolution, for example, the arbitrary measure. And I said, if the government, the governor took a resolution at that time, it's because it's based on data and he knows, she knows that she has to protect all of us. But as of now, what do we have? So we do not have any transparency and we do not have data to say why we have to keep going. But at the same time, I don't wanna go to do something and I, I have a repercussion and impact on the health of our community. So after talking to uh, Council Brady and he explained, yes, it's arbitrary because we ask for answer, we do not have. We ask question, our questions remain unanswered and we need to hold our elected official accountable. So that's what we're doing right now and I think Council Brady, Council Vice President Brady, Council President Paprowska, and Council uh, Vargas for this initiative because we show the right thing to do by this resolution. At the same time, 
we need to be careful as well because some business owner, we still have the rules. We need to abide by the rules. And what we do right now is say, we need to live to ease the restriction. So that's something legally take to ease the restriction. But at the same time, I see a sloppy slope, slippy slope, where some business owner brag about violating the rules. So I have up now the rules in, in effect. So I hope after the passing of the resolution, no business owner takes think that this resolution give them a pass to violate the law. So we need to push to release, the, to ease the restriction, but we need to be firm to know we cannot let anyone violate the law and we support that. So I thank you so much, uh, Council, ready for calling for the, the call. I truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. So I support, as of now, I support the resolution because as I said, we need communication is the power. And if they cannot give us of the data we need to take uh, uh, to make decision, so we need them to take, they do what they should be doing right now. So our constituents count on us to be their voice. So we raise our voice to uh, the governor and I hope that proper measure will take into consideration to ease the burden on our small businesses. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council Member Germain. Council Member Riley. Thank you, Council President. I just wanna say that I wholeheartedly support this resolution. I think it is absolutely necessary and I echo the sentiments of all my fellow council members. Uh, most importantly to me is just the arbitrary nature of these restrictions. Uh, we've been given clear cut guidelines as Councilwoman Marino had stated from the CDC about uh, mask wearing, uh, social distancing, and so long as any establishment, whether it's a restaurant, a clothing store, no matter what it is, as long as they follow those, they should be able to maintain and earn a living. And that's why I'm in full support of this. I don't care whether that happens at 5 p.m., 10 p.m., or, or 1 a.m., as long as you're following the the rules set forth by the scientists, not an arbitrary uh, mandate by a lone governor, then you should be able to earn your earn your living. And that's why I'm in full support of this resolution. And I'd love to be added as a co-sponsor. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Riley. You will be added as a co-sponsor. Are there any other uh, comments or council members that want to be added as a co-sponsor? I would like to be added as a co-sponsor, please. Council Member Rinzulli. Any other members? Okay, I uh, think uh, you've all had an opportunity to speak. I'll, I'll save my comments for last. I just wanna say that um, this resolution is, is needed. I really hope the other towns and cities in the state uh, follow uh, what we're doing here in Cranston and what Smithfield did um, the other night. Um, whether you're in Cranston, Smithfield, Woonsocket, West Warwick or Westerly, you're struggling. Um, as a small business owner, as a restaurant, you've invested uh, thousands of dollars in plexiglass and, and other, um, other, other ways that you've had to cut back, cut your hours. And, you know, small business is the fabric of our community and you're struggling and if this goes on any longer, you're not gonna make it. Obviously COVID-19 is extremely, extremely serious and we take that matter seriously. Um, we're just asking that small businesses be able to earn a living for a few extra hours at night and, and operate during their, no, their normal business hours. Um, you know, this was brought in as a pause. It really has turned into something more permanent and um, ask the governor and the general assembly to take action. Um, that's all I have for comments. Uh, Councilmember Marino, I see your hand up. Sorry, council president, I didn't unmute before. If I could also be added as a co-sponsor, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, you're added as a co-sponsor, anybody else? Any other comments from any of the council members? There being none, uh, clerk, will you please take the roll? Councilwoman Marino? Yes. Councilman Ferry? Yes. Councilman Rizzuli? Yes. Councilman Vargas? Yes. Councilwoman Germain? Yes. Councilman Riley? Yes. 
Council Vice President Brady? Yes. Council President Takalaskis? Yes. Thank you very much, very much. And thank you to everybody uh, on the call tonight and on Zoom that testified and also zoomed in to watch the hearing and um, show support. We really appreciate it. That being said, there's no other business before this meeting tonight. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much, everybody. Thank you so much. Good job, Ed.